Hey everyone, Morgan here. The yogurt drops have been in the dehydrator for about 16 and a half hours or so. Um, they definitely needed like that full 16 hours. In fact, I could probably even dehydrate a little bit more. The thing is, um, they're, they're kind of chewy. Like they're not so like, uh, they're kind of snappy, but they're very chewy once they get in your mouth. And I don't know, they, they taste okay. Like I'll eat them. They're just, they don't really melt in my mouth the way that I expected. And I don't know, they're just kind of different. I'll, I'll definitely eat them, but I may not be making them again. Or maybe I'll try a different yogurt. Not really sure. Next up, I'm going to be dehydrating some marshmallows. Uh, I got a lot of questions about these. Uh, these should basically dehydrate and taste like um, Lucky Charms. Let's talk about oxygen absorbers. Air is about 20% oxygen and 80% nitrogen. Absorbers remove only the oxygen. The air left in the container is mostly nitrogen and will not affect the food or allow the growth of insects. Therefore, the final packaging may not have the appearance of being vacuum packed because of the remaining nitrogen in the package. The only way to get a good vacuum seal inside the bag is to use a vacuum sealer. So, Oxygen absorbers extend shelf life, prevents growth of aerobic pathogens and spoilage organisms, including molds. They eliminate the need for additives such as BHA, BHT, sulfur dioxide, sorbates, benzoates, etc. Oxygen absorbers become warm to the touch when they are working. They take about four hours to achieve their rated maximum absorption. I have an oxygen absorber in here. As you can see, there's still air in there. The only reason it's like it looks compressed is because I compressed it down first and then I sealed it. Now, you know, there's still, it's not, it didn't suck all the air out, okay? There's still plenty of air in there, but there's an oxygen absorber in there. So it's keeping the oxygen out, not the air. The best way to store uh, dehydrated food is either in a mylar bag with an oxygen absorber or in a mason jar with an oxygen absorber. Just remember that when you do open those mylar bags or the mason jars, you will need a new oxygen absorber in there if you plan to reseal it, like especially with the mason jar, you know, just plan to take a little bit out of the mason jar, just put it in. Many oxygen absorbers will come like in a 10 pack like this. I've seen some oxygen absorbers come in a much larger pack than this, but I like the smaller packs like this because I can use the oxygen absorbers a lot quicker. Once you unseal them from this type of packaging that it comes in, it does become warm to the touch and um, it starts to you know activate. So you do wanna get it into your Mylar bag or the mason jar as soon as possible. Um, and then whatever you don't, whatever ones you don't use or can't use, um, I would vacuum seal it immediately. But, um, you know, I would just try to use as many of the oxygen absorbers as you can um, instead of just re-vacuum sealing them. But either is an option. You can use it or just uh, re-vacuum seal it uh, just as quickly as you possibly can. Like, you know, less than 30 minutes. I would say less than 10 minutes, honestly. Um, you know, get them in that vacuum sealer as quick as you can. So I hope that this has cleared up a little bit about um, how oxygen absorbers work and um, how you can use them in your dehydrating needs. I think it's a little redundant to put an oxygen absorber in a vacuum sealed bag um, because a vacuum sealed bag is taking out all the air, but some people do uh, put an oxygen absorber in with the vacuum seal as well, and you're more than welcome to do that. Um, the oxygen absorber just probably won't have that much to do. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna keep on with my dehydrating, and I will see you all tomorrow. Conquer tomorrow by preparing today. Talk to y'all tomorrow, bye.